Hello and welcome back to the channel, it's Mark from PowerSonic and Apprentice One to One. Today we are in a big plant room, I'll show you around it in a second. I've got Matthew and Nathan here with me, we're going to be installing four 22 kilowatt EV charge points. This is at a school, I'm going to try and get you a bit of footage just walking around. Um, I won't be able to talk because there is an absolute bucket load of electricians in here doing other bits and decorators, it's a right busy old place and I just don't feel comfortable doing it. But I will run you around and show you what we're doing so you can see how the install comes together in those areas. Um, if I spin uh, yeah. got the old books out, because I'm gonna take Nathan through some of these today. Obviously Nathan's just finished his first year into his second year now as an electrical apprentice and I thought it'd be a good time to just run through some of the design. I've got the electrical OM print out as well so we can see exactly how we've come to the design considerations we have with this one, how it references back into the regs and all of the other bits and pieces we have to consider from the guidance note. We're probably on another edition of that one now actually, I need to check that, that could be out of date um, with the recent amendment two changes. So yes, there is that aspect to these things. Having spent £300 on the physical books at the last amendment and having the IET digital copies of these things, I haven't updated the whole range of books to amendment two. We've just got guidance note three, the on-site guide. Um, I'm trying to think what else ones we've got. I've probably shown them on the channel before, but I've not gone for all of the new versions of the guidance books this time, because as I said, digital copy with the IET. It's a lot of money and um, yeah, I'm sitting on that one for the time being. So yes, we'll, um, we'll go and have a look. We'll go and have a look outside and I will show you what's what with the install. Okay, so this is the plant room. You see the guys are just getting set up with bits and pieces. Um, bad little look in the trunk in, this is all isolated now. There's only a few circuits coming down here to um, the emergency lighting and a few other bits in the plant room. So we've killed those off just so we can be safe while we run our cabling in. Got the board we've pre-built down here. We do need a reducer to come off the 100mm trunk in and sit it on this 75. It's going to live somewhere over here. I'll run you around the whole install in a second show you what we've got but this is the plant room. If you follow the trunking around you can see it leads over to a big panel board over there where we're going to site our MCCB. We'll have a look at that in a sec. And um, there's a couple of other little sub boards as well on the BMS panel. Boilers and whatnot over there. It's quite a big old plant room. Let's go around and have a look now actually while we're here. So I can show you. Okay so you can see we've got um, the MCCBs all in here. We do have a spare way down in this bottom corner. It's fed by a 300mm feed coming straight off the substation according to the label on the front. If you see that there, we still need to check this. So uh, It's coming from substation number one. So we're going to have a look at that. Now with the MCCBs, you see you get these adjustment on here and I'll show you the one we install. This one, for example, has been set to its full rating at 63 amps. Generally, you'll find they're all just left on one. <laughs> that seems to be the default. I'm trying to see if we've got any others here. Uh, I can't put my flash on because we zoomed out too wide, but no, they are all, they're all there. Um, but we've got that to work from. You can see the massive beefy supply coming into the bottom down there. Trunking works its way all the way over here, which is very handy. So we can run our tails out along here and over to our board. We was going to put the EV board here, but we wanted it to be accessible and obvious to um, anybody who's coming into this plant room to try and isolate them or work on them. And it made sense to pop it in this corner here, it's out the way, it's tucked up on the side and it makes our route out to the final circuits a little bit easier as well. Okay so that's the plant room and to just give you a quick look we need to get the charge points on this wall here so there's going to be four bays going along here, obviously we're going to have the crash barrier going in as well, um, obviously there's been vehicles parked in this car park for a long time but we're sighting charge points on here, we want a bit of protection against anyone running into those, a van backing up against them for example. Um, I'll shoot you inside and show you inside the hall. Fortunately through the other side of this wall there's an electrical riser cupboard, you can see kind of backs on here, fire exit is um, in the hall itself and we're going to run some um, decorative trunking around the inside of so we can try and keep the cable in nice and neat. We could have just put tray on the outside there behind the crash barrier, but it was to try and reduce the unsightly mess outside. I think we can do it in a neater way by using an internal route and then punching through. It also allows us to protect the tray and charge point with the same crash guard. Um, and again, we'll show you that as the installation builds up and moves along. So these are four 22 kilowatt pod points going in. They're the Solo 3s, I think they call them. So these are wall mounted. 
Um, obviously they do have the facility to charge out across all three phases so we have that consideration which is why we're going back to the mccb panel board it's unlikely that's ever going to be the case because generally these are just going to be cars pulling up with single phase charges in so again rotate your phases on the charge points pod point actually instruct that in the instructions instructing the instructions so if you um don't use your, your set color code you normally would with your l1 l2 l3 move them around so if somebody's pulling up to charge a one and charge a three they're not both on the same phase um, you're kind of spreading that out to give you a rough chance of balancing. Not really expected to have electric vehicles on these in the short term. There's no one in the school who actually has one. It's the same for all of the Academy Trust at the minute who are having these put in. But the plan is at the next upgrade, when they're all sending their lease vehicles back, that they will be doing. So this is kind of getting ready for that. And uh, yeah, Matty and Nathan are going to be back soon. They've just nipped off to the wholesalers to go and get a reducer for the tray. Get some um, singles to run in through the supply for our new board. Um, and tidy all those bits up and then we can start over in the hall I'll go and show you that right now so this is the hall you'll see we've got the fire cupboard there that we're speaking about at the other side and that's the external wall where all the vehicles are going to be parked decorators are in at the minute you can see all their kind of filling and stuff but we're going to drop a little bit of trunking around try and keep it as neat as pos and run our final circuits out in here so we just dropped a temporary bush on there for the minute we're waiting a reducer because our trunking's 100 mil that's 75 wholesale is dropping it off soon get that sorted out at that stage we're all into the trunking now to this point we've had to drop out here um, because this is all very full because of the bms control so we're going to drop out here in some more trunking scoot along underneath and then up into that mccb board over there you see we've got our cable all coiled up ready to do that the guys have just gone for some dinner um, I was just looking at the, the books with Nathan, so we've had a little run through these, talking about RCD requirements for your EV charge points and how they must open all conductors. Having a look in the regs with that, I think it's really important to try and tie the regs in with the practicalities of what you're doing when you are employing apprentices. So we've just been having a little look through it. Um, if you're not familiar with the book itself and you're studying at the minute, section 722 is electric vehicle charging and then it might be the fifth edition now i need to check it changes so often with evs i lose track of things myself but you've got the rcd aspect here there's loads and loads of other little bits in i've actually shown this book on the channel already so i'm not going to go massively into it but i just had a run through with nathan um, and we were looking at this annex d actually this was quite interesting so it's the checklist for commercial and industrial installations and you can see here it goes through like a whole list of things which some relate to the electrical install and some don't. So are there any hazardous stones where flammable combustible gases may be present? Possibly. So this is some of the considerations you have to make with your design, your selection and your erection. So have you identified boundaries of any hazardous zones? Can the installation be carried out so that the charge vehicle cable and connectors are outside the hazardous area when charging? So that's talking about the vehicle itself connecting into the charge point rather than your um, overcurrent protection and your final circuits. Is the metering adequate for the intended use and billing model? And again, that's something that different customers have different requirements for. So if they want in separate billing and metering for the EV, um, that they can monitor that and see that what's been consumed by the electric vehicle charge points is actually covering the cost of the energy um, that it is using, if you like. And usually that's done through metering. We've got one of those going on this install as well. Is the existing supply adequate for the additional demand? Well, we've got a nice 300 mil supply down here. There's currently lots of capacity. We've had load monitoring in here for about eight weeks and it's roughly pulling around 100 amps-ish. There's really not a substantial amount of load here. It's an arts block, so it's a great big hall, dance class, a couple of music rooms. There's not a lot, to be fair, other than the basics, heating and services that are running around the building. So yeah, we have lots of capacity for the EV side of things. Asks about PME, which is interesting. TT, mobile network coverage, so checking your 3G. So it's all the practicalities of, of an install. I like this. I like how it runs you through that at a basic level because it's easy to forget stuff while you're doing surveys. So have the correct type of RCD been selected in relation to the charging equipment? Type B for mode 3 or mode 4. It's an important thing to, to keep in mind that your type A doesn't always tick all the boxes. And it goes on to talk about has it been installed outside hazardous zones? So this is again running into the earlier on of what we mentioned. Are the main operating controls and any socket outlets between 0.75 and 1.2 meters above ground and displays between 1.2 and 1.4 meters? So that's something that's often missed with these things. Nice to see it covered in there. And yeah, it's a really useful little guide. 
and um, making apprentices aware of these things is important because these guidance documents really help us out in explaining the intent of this book which isn't always straightforward so I'm going to leave the guys to have some lunch now I've got to zip off and go and see if I can get some um, steel trunking so I'm going to go and look for that Matt and Nathan are going to get this board mounted to the wall they're going to dress the cables into it and get them terminated like I said we're waiting that reducer so we are going to have to pop it off the wall at some stage and sort that out I'm going to leave a bit of slack in the trunking around the board so we've got a bit of flexibility there a quick shower on the wall oh, zoom back a touch oh that didn't work there we go we've decided so the electrical cupboard's right behind here so we're going to come out in our steel wire armors punch through into that cupboard and then we're going to switch to plastic containment in the hall so we can run out and around to the final charge point locations and punch through to external and straight up into the charges and obviously because we're swapping to steel wire armor we've got that mechanical earth protection on there which we're going to need when we're outside this building with the vehicles pulling up to park and equally inside that hall aesthetically it looks a bit better than steel wire armors on tray or in metal containment let's pop them in a bit of plastic which kind of matches some of the other stuff that's in there as well so that's the chain of that one if i get back this afternoon i'll have a little bit little bit of extra footage of where we've got to and then we'll kind of leave that video there we are waiting on the charge points to be delivered so we can't finish this one we'll get it to a point um, and then as we did with the other school i showed on the channel earlier on this year we'll come back later on pop the charges on and hopefully jobs are good and We've got another school we're starting on Wednesday, I think. Similar sort of programme. So we need to get on with this, get all the final circuits in, and then move out and crack that one out as well this week. Catch you in a bit. Okay, so you can see the guys have got some trunking laid out there. Nathan's just rating to get this cable in. It's going to get screwed to the wall, and then we've got a bit of inventive um, trunking to do down the other end to get it into the MCCB panel board. But we'll show you that in a sec. Let's pull you back through these stairs. Matthew's at this end just getting the board on and again we're waiting our reducer still not arrived so we've just popped that on for now that's going to have to get shortened obviously reducer into this other trunking but we're in there got the main switch all wired with our um, conductors and again they supplied us with two greys rather than a black as well which is frustrating but we've got it in for now um, I'll decide later if I'm going to change that or not just getting the earth lugged up um, and then yeah it's back to the Oops, zooming in rather than out. Back to the plan I mentioned for yesterday, for tomorrow, where we're going to come into the back of this cupboard here. We'll pop a bit of tray up, shoot through the wall, make sure we do our fire ceiling properly, and then we can go off and away to the charge points. But um, not a bad result for today. You can just see Matthew using the crimper on here, actually. So we get the lug crimped up. Um, and yeah, we are where we are now, I guess. We've got our MCBs all in the board, ready to go out to the final circuits. They're all done. Um, just a bit of dressing away to do. This end, when all those cables come in, probably bring them in the top. Maybe the side. We'll see how I feel when we get to that. Wholesalers, again, have really done us a proper job here. We asked for two lengths of trunking, um, obviously with lids. They sent us three lengths of trunking and one lid. It's brilliant. So we were a bit short on gear there as well, but fortunately time is on our side on this one. So we're going to get on with this. Um, probably be another video now for the next part, because I want to show the inside in a bit more detail than normal. So we'll leave this one here. See this board? There is a video of us um, doing all of this containment on there earlier on on the channel, if you want to go and check that out. And um, we'll speak a bit more about the design on this one as we move on. Nathan needs to start associating the... So we... Um, had a little look at those, but that might help him in his college studies. You want to get loads of pictures of this as well, Nathan, for your portfolio, all the work you're doing along the way. Make sure you're getting plenty of snaps. Otherwise, we'll see you on the next one. If you've not already, subscribe to the channel, hit the thumbs up, thumbs down, let us know what you think in the comments, and we'll see you on the next one.